Okay. Hi, I'm David Solomonoff, the president of the Internet Society of New York, and we're here today at the Circumvention Tools Hack Fest at Columbia Law School, and I'm talking to Brian Dugan of the Open Tech Institute. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the Open Tech Institute and uh, what, where, how that is, how it started, and, and what you're doing? Sure. Okay. Um, well, I joined the Open Tech Institute in uh, September of last year, mm -hmm. um, but it had been uh, a, a, a three-year-old project at that point. Um, Sasha Meinrath uh, is the director of the Open Tech Institute, and he started that with a, with a few colleagues to address um, the lack of uh, technical dialogue um, in the uh, policy uh, and sometimes activist space uh, in Washington, D.C. And, and abroad. So the, uh, the unique uh, intervention that, o that OTI makes is uh, it attacks th these problems of the lack of open technology from three different perspectives. Uh, it attempts to have a policy intervention, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, specifically in, in Washington, but sometimes internationally, um, arguing for uh, open networks, open technologies, um, it uh, supports that work, and that work also supports our field work and our field operations. So we have uh, uh, rights supporters and sometimes activists working in uh, several parts of the United States uh, deploying our technical intervention. So we actually also uh, develop the software and, uh, and test on hardware and uh, Use hardware to put our uh, our development projects in practice. So, do you actually set up networks and build build on? Uh, that has been the or? so far. That has been the primary technical project uh -huh. of uh, of OTI is the Commotion Mesh Wireless project. Uh -huh, so, okay. that's uh, supported by by policy. P policy is informed by the uh, technical realities that the tech uh, that the tech wing can can help with. And uh, policy supports field, and field is supported by uh, the tech, and of course, all of the field, of course, provides the situational realities mm -hmm. of, of working with communities right. and organizations. Where are the installations of commotion? Sorry, where do you back play? There are currently uh, one deployment in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. um, there, the Mount Pleasant Community Wireless Network. Uh, there is a deployment in Detroit. Um, uh -huh, okay. And there, there is a deployment in uh, Philadelphia. Uh -huh. So uh, we work most directly with uh, the, the Detroit and, um, and Washington D.C. deployments, and so those are. Do you, do you work with the Freenet? Uh, we uh, we are. I mean, they they are allies well, in uh, in the in the concept of free of free, you know of free networks, mm -hmm. um, and they you know we uh, they. they uh, are, are supporters of the commotion mesh wireless software, mm -hmm. and so they are part of our of our community. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. so do they do any actual development of the software for that? Or? Um, none right now that I'm that I'm aware of. Uh -huh, I see. Um, but yeah, so so I used to work on the commotion mesh wireless project quite a bit, but I uh, have kind of changed gears to a new privacy project within OTI. So this will actually generate even more technical projects. I mean, because Seamus will be able to tell you plenty about right, yeah. about commotion. Um, We're going to interview him later. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Um, but the the privacy project will be making uh, some more technical research and field and policy interventions. Right, and, and what does a privacy project entail? And uh, you're developing software there, or uh, yes, uh -huh. uh, uh, well, uh, in a, in a tiny way now and very soon, uh, some more some more projects that that will be defined. Our current projects are uh, research with uh, my colleague uh, Sita Pena Gangadharan, and uh, she is she, she her her work and which has kind of shaped the the privacy project overall. Uh, focuses on the issues of privacy and security for um, marginalized and underserved communities, even communities of non-users where their interface with uh, organizations, governments, and corporations uh, necessarily translate leaks their data from what, the, from what these users uh, don't think of as uh, electronic space uh, into an electronic space where they have no means to control it. Right. What, what kind of situations would that be, if you could clarify that just a little bit? Sure. So 
if I'm uh, if I'm a non-user and I uh, don't own a computer and I don't own a a mobile device, right. or if my mobile device is what we will call a feature or or dumb phone, right. um, then I am typically uh, that kind of user is typically under some kind of economic duress to use uh, payday loan uh, organizations, for example. Or a check cashing. Uh, or a check cashing right. service. Mm -hmm. um, we might, you know, in, in uh, other times, we might call these organizations loan sharks for, you know. Payday people. loans it is yeah. basically legalized. Yeah. Loan yeah. 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 Right, exactly. Right. So, but the the bar for uh the the privacy bar for accepting these types of loans is incredibly high. Um, I not oh. I have to submit my you know my paycheck stubs, so now this organization knows uh, where I work, how often I get paid, the amount mm -hmm. of the, the amount of payment that I get, um, and they, and they I, tend to do um, automatic uh, charges to the. the, the Bank account I, I don't know. I'm, uh, so uh, the 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 example I'm I'm not uh, too familiar with the example. I mean, especially right. some yeah. of, some of these uh, these data are actually things that any loan organization would collect about you. Right. But the users of of uh, credit union loans and other larger bank loans um, might typically have methods of of uh, discovering. What types of data that you know that that organization is collecting about you, but the payday loan organization may put these users under under duress for well, non-users under duress right. for collecting more types of information. Mm -hmm. Who know you know there can be anything on the form for someone under economic duress. They'll say anything and sure. give anything up to make rent or to to get food. Yeah, right. Once that information has been collected, it gets digitized, and uh, so that that is. You know, and then once once that once information has been digitized, it can be shared with anyone. It can go anywhere, sure. be sold for any reason. And the payday, you know, so payday loan organizations or companies have absolutely no incentive not to sell that that type of right. information. Uh, it's a it's a cash cow. Right. So I mean, that that is an example where uh, user information crosses that line from what you know from on paper to a mm -hmm. digital realm, right. and these users have no you know, non users have no control over that. Um, but the uh, there are also uh, for marginalized, underserved communities. Oftentimes, are much less digitally literate sure. than uh, privileged communities. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, there's you know there's uh, exceptions in uh, both ways. Um, but uh, marginalized communities are typically um, m m uh, have the least defense against viruses when when. Uh, vi when virus protection programs cost money, um, they are uh, encouraged to use various types of services on on the internet that uh, that collect information and sell information. Mm -hmm. So, th uh, and they have, and their digital their level of digital literacy prevents them from understanding and using the various types of privacy software and anonymity software right. that pr more privileged users might be able to take advantage of. Right. So, the, so the technical intervention of the privacy project would be um, making, helping to make this software more usable, mm -hmm. making connections between the developers of privacy and anonymity software and the user communities that that software needs to reach, and making connections between the documenters of this software. So. One might consider journalists and activists or rights defenders a high high risk or high value target community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the connecting organiz organizations that support these communities with the software developers to uh, to develop documentation, ease of use, user mm -hmm. interfaces uh, to make these things more usable by uh, by marginalized, underserved, high value uh, communities. So. To that end, the things that I have started doing right now are, uh, from a technical perspective, my colleague Sita uh, uh, has been working on a research project that uh, um, that is designed to discover what data mobile applications, tip specifically mobile applications that are being most used by marginalized and underserved communities, um, are leaking. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I and my colleague uh, Jordan McCarthy are working on a method of um, executing what amounts to a security attack uh, right. on, on these applications 
um, to monitor what data to is being monitor moved, what what well. what they mm -hmm. you know what they're what they're doing you know mm -hmm. uh, we we know it can be done some of our colleagues in the space have done it already but uh, some of the uh, most used applications haven't been profiled mm -hmm. uh, and so her that is that is her initial research project mm -hmm. Uh, my initial software projects right now are volunteering with the Tor anonymity software community. So there's a software called uh, Flash Proxy that circumvents uh, certain types of blocking of Tor traffic of access to the Tor network. Um, which And uh, the unique thing about Flash Proxy is that it can enable both um, third-party website administrators and users across the internet to contribute part of their resources, namely IP addresses, to the, uh, to the space so that if I'm in a repressive regime that could be blocking Tor IP addresses, then a proxy I might go through or a number, any number of, of uh, client IP addresses on the, on the internet that are not blocked by my, uh, by my repressive regime. So uh, if I, on the user, as a user in a non-repressive regime or less repressive regime, can load a web page that makes my IP address available to a user behind a firewall. So are they actually sharing traffic or just the IP address? I, so my, my, I, I can't explain too much about uh, Flash Proxy itself. The developer, David uh, Fifield, could explain much more. Mm -hmm. I think, it, I think it, uh, the, at that point, the client does serve some uh, proxying mm -hmm. function, mm -hmm. um, but it may only be so far as, as using their client IP address. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but, but in order to enable users to be able to, uh, web users to be able to do that, um, they have to load a web page which contains a, Java, uh, a JavaScript that mm -hmm. uh, makes their IP address available. That JavaScript only exists on one web page so far, so in order to maximize the exposure of, this, of, of internet users being able to take part in this system, I'm working on a Drupal module, soon a Facebook. Uh, maybe perhaps a Facebook application, perhaps mm -hmm. a WordPress module um, that will uh, that Drupal site administrator, uh, administrators, WordPress site administrators, Facebook users will be able to install on their site or you know make mm -hmm. part of their Facebook profile and make their and, and make it very easy for them to make their IP address available. Mm -hmm. So those are those are low bar easy wins. Right. But, uh, with that Facebook app or WordPress. Oh, plug in. Uh, we, could you add authentication so that you only are giving access to specific people, or is it just open to the world? How that would that? defeat the the nature and the purpose of anonymity. So if I oh, if, right, right, if, okay. if I'm running a Tor relay, the last thing I would want to do is have determine, a record, that, right? And right. determine right. I mean, I shouldn't know who's coming from where right. in the first place, and determining which users uh, can use my relay would defeat the, the spirit of, and, mm -hmm. the, and the possibility of anonymity. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, well, is there anything else you'd like to add about the, uh, the projects you're working on now? No, I think that, that covers That's what we're working on right now, right. yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. Great, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Fantastic.